Yeah, greetings. So uh, this demonstration is uh, the 3D digitizer workbench inside of Katia. So let me throw in the scenario here for you. So I scanned a clay model, and the, the demonstration I'm showing is a handle for a, a flight control of an airplane, uh, but it can be any really type of clay model. So I've scanned that. I have the point cloud saved as an STL. So this this demonstration will show how to bring that in or how I bring it in and how to align it so it can be further refined, meshed, and created eventually into a surface model. So let me show you what I have here. So I have a cylinder I placed in with the, in the GSD from the GSD workbench. It is 0.75 in, ra in radius and about five inches in height, roughly the size of the handle. And I'm going to use that later in um, this demonstration. So that's what's sitting there now. I have a geometric set I'm calling point cloud. And so let me bring this in. So I'm going to um, select the point cloud from, um, I have it saved out on a drive. It's an STL format. I'm going to leave it grouped and I'm going to show some statistics. Um, I saved it as in, in inches is the unit, so I'm going to make sure I also bring it in in the same unit that I saved it in. If I saved the point cloud in inches and I try to bring it in in millimeters, it's going to be a much different size. It won't be true size. So I'm going to make sure I have the same units. Scale factor, I'm going to leave it one. So when I update, it's going to show the statistics. This model has 87,439 points. You can see how it's dropping it in. So I'm going to hit apply. I'm not going to do facets, so I make sure I turn that off because I don't want to create a mesh here to begin with. So I'm going to hit apply and turn that off. And you can see my point cloud brought in, and that's the 87,000 points. So what I need to do, my objective, is to get this handle lined up with essentially the center axis of the handle lined up with my Z axis on my axis system. And, it's, and I really, I just want to shove it down into this cylinder. So uh, orientation to the handle itself, I only scanned it once, so it's missing the bottom and the top, which is okay. I could have added some more merged points to that, but this is okay for what I'm trying to do. Uh, so this is the bottom. This is going to be the top, just for orientation. So I want the axis system down here, uh, and then the Z-axis running this way. So I use... Um, and I'll pull up a toolbar here. This is the cloud reposition toolbar. And I'm going to start off uh, aligning with the compass. And I'm going to just show a couple of things here. And then I'll show you the real way that I like to do it. So if I align with the compass, I can take this point cloud. And I can go to move with the compass. And I can move this point cloud based off of the compass that I have. I can even rotate it. I can manipulate it. When I do it this way, I typically try to get an orthographic uh, vantage point, and then I start tugging and moving and placing, etc. Until and sometimes I have to do multiple moves to get it where it needs to go. And that involves rotating angles, aligning, etc. It's quite the job if you're just aligning with a compass. So it takes a lot of work. So if I hit a, and I can keep the initial, and I advise my students to keep the initial. Oftentimes, I'll do away with the initial myself just because I know I'm not going to need it later. But sometimes it's, it is very, very helpful to leave that initial one sitting out there just in case you need to go back and grab it. But again, i got to go through it one more time. It, and this just takes a lot of bracketing and fine-tuning to get it eventually lined up where you want it to line up. So I'm going to show a little bit of a different approach. And I probably should have left the original out there, but it'll work off of this one as well. Um, so... I'm going to take this model, I'm going to use the same tool. I'm going to use the same tool. This time though, I'm going to be a little smarter with what I do. And I'm going to use a reference. And that reference is going to be the cylinder I brought in. And so instead of aligning with the compass, even though the name of the dialog box is align using the compass, I'm going to align with an axis system. And notice when I did that, that it brought it in and it lined it up. I can look at this from different vantage points, orthographic vantage points. You can see 
that it's lining it up with a cylinder now, which is very, very helpful. So I'm going to get rid of the initial value and I'm going to go ahead and hit OK. You can see that it's in there. Now it's upside down according to the model that I wanted, but that's OK. I can still keep manipulating this. Typically I would do this all in one step as well, but I'm going to break it down into smaller chunks. So I can come back in here, I can pick the point or the, the point cloud, the scan here. I can uh, go to compass this time. Notice the compass is more aligned orthogonal with my screen. So I can take this and just flip it because I want it to be flipped 90 degrees. I can still do a reference. Let's see what happens if I do a reference to my cylinder. I'm not going to keep the initial. And now I've got it oriented the correct way. Hit OK. Now, it's still not exactly centered like I want it, but I'm working it working it that way and I'm showing you I could do a lot of this in smaller steps and you know in a lesser number of steps I should say but I just want to kind of show the basics here especially for my students so what I'm going to do is I'm going to come back to my cylinder and right now I've got it at one inch in radius I want to make it 0.75 just kind of clean it up a little bit that's more it's more of a power grip so it's about one and a half in, at one and a half in diameter I don't care about the height too much but so the cylinder is a little bit smaller now so let me go back, I'm going to do, instead of doing this align with compass, I'm going to jump over here and do this align by best fit. And I'm going to pick the point cloud. And the best fit is going to be that cylinder again. All right, so hit apply. It helps to have this close. And I'm going to get rid of the initial. I tell my students to keep the initial, but I'm going to get rid of it. And there we go. So to me, that's a decent enough. Let's look at it from this side. Sometimes I'll take it here and do an alignment up uh, just to make sure my it's oriented to my axis like I like. But I think that's really good for me where I'm sitting here. So if I hit a hide on the cylinder, that is where I want it. Uh, I've got my point clouds in. Now notice that Katia will create little mini axis systems for every move. I typically delete those. I don't need them in the future, so I go up and delete those. I leave my original access system, of course. But I've got that aligned like I want it uh, for future reference. So um, Point Cloud brought it in with in the 3D digitizer. It's several different ways, but I typically, again, use uh, to move this, but several different ways to move it. And I typically will do a combination of a line with a compass and also align my best fit to get this in the way I want it. So finally, let's look at modifying the points in the point cloud. There's 87,000 and something points in this model. So there's a toolbar bar called Cloud Edition. And one of the options here allows you to filter the number of points down. So if I select that option and I select my point cloud, the homogeneous option is right now it's by default set to 0.135 and that's a neighborhood value. You can see the neighborhood on the screen. It's a circle. It's actually spherical, but you can see that. And what it's going to try to do is uh, do away with points, keeping just a minimum number inside that sphere. So if I kept it at the default that it's given me for this model, it's going to take it down from... 187,000 and something. Let's just see what happens. So it took it down to only a 1,400 points. So that's a little extreme. It may work for you, but that's not what I'm looking for. Actually, I wouldn't filter any of these to begin with, but I just want to demo this to you. So select that and let's bump it down to 0 0.05. Notice the neighborhood got smaller. So it should give you more points. And now I've got 86, almost 77,000 points. Now that's not too bad. But again, I'm not going to do any of these. So let's just for demo, I'm just going to cancel that and just go back to my original. Now another tool here, which I find useful. Notice you got a lot of, is cutting out points, but notice you got some points here, such as in this area that um, maybe you just don't need. So I can come in here to the third option, which is the remove option. 
you know, I can remove individual points if I wanted to, such as select the model, select the point right there, hit OK, and that point's gone. Now, you don't want to go through 87,000 points, so there's a way that you can trap points in a rectangle or a polygon or even a spline, but let's say I came through, I gotta pick the mesh first, but let's say I came through and I just drew a little line through like this, or poly polygon through, and double tap when you're done drawing your polygon. And then notice it traps those, but in that trap will extend the length of your model, and that may cause problems, so you can lessen the length if you need to just to get where you want to work. You don't want to get rid of some points in the background that might cause some problems. So hit OK there and those points are gone. Uh, typically I will also look at this from an orthographic view and maybe I've got a jagged top edge here. Sometimes I'll come through with something like a polygon here and just maybe throw in a light trim at the top here like kind of getting a haircut <laughs> at the very top. Um, Sometimes I wait and do this with a mesh instead of doing it with a point cloud. And maybe the bottom here we can do as well. So let's see what happens. Kind of jagged here on the bottom, need a little trim. So come in, trap with polygon. Probably wouldn't hurt to do a rectangle actually on this one. So I can draw a rectangle. I don't want to go too much into the model. Let's just take it right there. Trim those out. And that is going to leave me with about the points I want. It would all filter some of them out for demo purposes. So let's take this down to point zero 0.05 and we'll leave it there for now.